Hello and welcome back to Exothermic Plays Games. I'm Exothermic and the date today is Wednesday, September 11th, 2024. I've been doing a countdown of my favorite video games of all time through each day of the year, and coming in at number 112 is Child of Light. Child of Light is a really interesting game for me. Some months after its initial release, I bought it on Steam and then it sat there for another few months in my library, as Steam games do. I had heard good things about it and it definitely seemed up my alley, so I was excited to try it. Based on how it looked, on trailers, on discussion of gameplay, length, everything, I thought to myself as I was installing it, I'm really excited to play this charming, beautiful, extremely stylized indie RPG. And then the Ubisoft launcher opened and I did a double take. At that point in time, Ubisoft Montreal, the developer of Child of Light, had been pretty much exclusively pushing out Assassin's Creed's and Far Cry's for the last few years. You know, big, open, or at least open-ish world games with enormous budgets and tons of blow and really focusing on making big games for broad audiences. And then there's Child of Light, which is absolutely none of those things. Child of Light is a focused and definitely unique platforming role-playing experience. The story here isn't admittedly the most amazing thing, but I'd still call it more than serviceable. Tragedy befalls the royal family, and the beloved princess grows ill and seemingly dies in the night. However, she's not actually dead, but is instead trapped in another world, while the kingdom is falling to ruin with her father consumed by grief. There's a magic mirror and some extremely predictable uh, twists and betrayals, so while the actual plot is nothing especially new, the delivery is done very well. The real thing to talk about with Child of Light is, of course, the gameplay. There's really two games going on at the same time here. First is some very light platforming. I mean, just incredibly light. In less than an hour, you can fly, uh, and the platforming doesn't matter anymore. There's some light puzzle work, though, mostly in the form of hitting switches in the right order and projecting symbols onto things. But that brings us to what makes the gameplay great. I know the game is playable on some consoles, but honestly, I can't imagine playing it with a controller. On PC, the cursor from the mouse is a magical little firefly named Igniculus. It's got a meter with energy, and if you hold down left click, it does its firefly thing and spits out a bunch of light. This can be used to solve puzzles, but importantly, it's also heavily involved in the combat. Combat in this game is turn-based with an incredible twist on the active time battle system. There's a bar at the bottom of the screen that has an icon for each character. Based on the character's speed stat, they fill the bar until they reach the red part at the end, which is when you select an action for them. That action is performed when they complete the red section, but if you're hit with an attack while in the red bar, it cancels your action and knocks you back down the meter a good chunk. Different actions have different cast times that indicate how quickly you'll progress through the red bar, so you have to do this sort of juggling of trying to get your abilities off before you get hit. But if you don't think you'll be able to, you can just use the defend action, which is instantaneous, making you take less damage and allowing you to restart the overall meter partway through. That's already great, but on top of that, you can use Igniculus's light to slow whichever enemy the mouse is over. The best moments are when you can successfully manage yours and the enemy's progress on the meter to consistently knock them back to prevent them from taking any actions. But in a pinch, you can also use Igniculus on yourself to heal. Just like in the platforming sections of the game, anytime you use Igniculus's light, you spend energy from his meter. The energy also replenishes slowly during combat, but if you want to refill it right away, you can interact with these plants on the sides of the screen to fill it up immediately. For most fights, you're only going to be able to do that twice, but if fights do go really long, those plants will replenish themselves too, allowing you to do it again. The intricate blend of turn-based and real-time strategy here, with managing the action meter and also getting real-time benefits out of your mouse control, is 
fascinating and is not something I've seen replicated in any other game ever. I simply adore it. So why isn't the game in the top 100? Throughout the game, you amass a party of different people you help throughout the world, and they're definitely an interesting cast of characters, but they just don't actually, for the most part, feel that different. Each character has pretty large skill trees you could spend points on from leveling up to give them more stats, abilities, and other benefits, though admittedly calling them trees is a little disingenuous, it's just three different linear paths. The characters do have some differences, but most of the mechanical differences are pretty much, this is a melee fighter, this is a spellcaster, go. The game tries to put them into different roles, but they frankly don't feel distinct enough to me until you get really late in the game. For the majority of the game, everything feels a little too samey. The writing for the different characters is pretty fun, and as you've maybe seen from the gameplay happening throughout the video, it's all written as poetry, uh, although granted not that great of poetry, it's just lots of rhyming, but I do wish there was more mechanical identity to them. Also, while I do love the combat system, apart from the bosses, the strategy for most fights is kind of the same over and over, even as you develop your characters. So those things, combined with the predictable narrative, keep it just outside the top 100. All in all, Child of Light is a beautiful, thoughtful, and memorable experience that has really stuck with me over the last decade. It's charming and quirky characters combined with streamlined but in-depth combat and highly stylized art style make me forget I had to deal with the Ubisoft launcher to start playing. Lastly, and absolutely most importantly, all of the music is done by Canadian singer-songwriter I will not attempt to pronounce her extremely French name because I will get it wrong. <laughs> uh, it should be on the screen now, and it blows my mind she hasn't made soundtracks for anything else ever again because the music in this game is so good! Join me tomorrow as I talk about my 111th favorite game, where I become a fridge. <laughs>